Hi everybody, welcome back to Capricorn Radio TV. This is your host James and I am joined by a guest of the show today, returning guest Mr. L.A. Marzulli. Uh, you can follow along with lamarzulli.net for today's author and documenter. And uh, we're going to talk about this uh, season nine and watch your season nine documentary alongside the accompanying book, I believe it is, Days of Chaos. Uh, Watchers Nine Days of Chaos attempts to pull together a team of experts to try and answer some of the most disturbing questions about the times in which we live. The host and the author, L.A. Marzulli, covers many topics of interest. A uh, friend of the show, Dr. Brooks Agnew, talks about EMPs and Jade Helm, theories about the bee die-off and colony collapse syndrome, a seven-year drought in California, global violence. Director Richard Shaw examines the Kamburga's UFO footage and finds aliens. A pastor in Iran tells us that Yeshua... Yeshua is visiting Muslims there and much more. Uh, um, Gil Broussard, I see, is making an appearance as well. So I'm really excited to talk to L.A. about this today. L.A., welcome back to the show, brother. Great to be here, James. Thanks for having me on. Very cool. Always good to see you again, uh, L.A. Great to do a video again. Wow, I want to jump straight into Planet X because I've done a few heavy-hitting shows on Planet X, L.A., and I've had the pleasure of sitting down with Gil Broussard. Is it Jill or Gil? I can't remember. Uh, it's Gil. Gil. Gilbert Gilbert yeah. Um Man, he commands attention when he, when he speaks. I sat with three hours with him. Actually, it was probably about four hours with breaks and stuff. And, I, and he gave me a three-hour presentation, which I put up LA on Capricorn TV. And between going between the biblical stuff and the science stuff and the geology and the, uh, the evidence that he's providing, I've had such feedback from that show, LA, that I mean, people that aren't even biblical or even scientific and like they're sitting there and they're just gobsmacked by the, the presentation that yeah. Gil. And man, tell me, have you, you've met Gil, have you? Yeah, well, he said we sat down for just like we're doing, except in person mm -hmm. uh, with a one on one. We probably interviewed him for at least two hours. Yeah. And then, you know, we took him to dinner and stuff and we had more, um, you know, off the record conversation. And, and of course, what's in the film, two hours boils down to like, I think maybe 12 minutes with him. Yeah. Um, he raises some fascinating points and his PowerPoint presentation is second to none. Second to uh, none. Yeah. He's, he's, he's done his work. He's done his homework. Mm. Uh, he knows of what he speaks. The problem I have with it, and this is, you know, I've, I've been down this road. Watchers went down this road with Marshall Mastered in 2012. <laughs> yeah. Planet X was coming. We're going to see it. It's the end of the world, blah, blah, blah. Mm. You know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice type of a thing. Gotcha. So it's like, okay, I'm listening to the information. Everything that he says is is right on. Yeah, some of this stuff, if there is a planet out there, if Planet X does exist, then it, it could be causing the perturbances that we see, mm -hmm. uh, not only in, in the lunar surface, other planets certainly could account for the floods mm. um, and some of the some of the biblical um, events that happen. It could do all that. The problem I have is that if it was really going to show up, we would be seeing something by now, even with, even with Gill's gate of, of Gill's date of late March 2016. We should be seeing something. And, you know, I like you, I'm an Internet hound. I'm always looking for news. I go to a lot of different sites, a lot of off sites looking for information. There's one guy that, that that's claiming to see it. It looks like lens flare to me, um, with all you know, due respect to this one particular researcher. So, you know, like like all these things, I hold on to them very loosely. Mm. And this is one which I hold on to very loosely. I know about Planet X. I respect Gil. I think he's done an incredible amount of work. But just like and I'll change subjects here real quick. Yeah. Just like what's going on in the Middle East right now with the Russians coming down. There's a lot of people going, oh, my gosh, this is the Ezekiel 38 war, yeah. which has been prophesied in the Bible for like 2,500 years. No, it's not. It's, it could be setting the stage for the Ezekiel 38 war, but we're not there yet. Yeah. And the fact that the chi are now entered the fray with, you know, nuclear submarines and, and ships and everything else, that ups the ante. We haven't seen anything like this ever. The chi have never been in the Middle East since about 800 years, and that was with the Mongol invasion. Mm -hmm. So this is really unprecedented. Mm. So it's not Ezekiel 38. Again, just like Gill's work, it makes me kind of sit on the edge of my seat and go, okay, what's coming? What What's about to happen? 
Is Planet X really coming? Are we looking at the Ezekiel 38 war in the Middle East? Is that what is that what's next on the prophetic time clock? And frankly, we don't know, which is why, once again, holding on the things loosely. Uh, I had Graham Hancock on recently, and I know Graham's work is highly indicative of perhaps a comic coming in um, in the next 40, 80 years, perhaps, all ancient traditions around the world. Again, I'm open to that being maybe wrong. Hopefully, if we're wrong, it is wrong. But I'm open to it, and I'm looking at the evidence, and just like Gil, it's, it's highly indicative of something. Um, it, it's very hard to say what's going to happen. It's very hard to predict something like that. Um, I, I somehow think that the level of research done on Planet X, and just to focus on Gil again, I mean, I think he's provided the most, and I think he's done, that, he's done his homework the most. And he's he, provi- he is the he's the go to guy. I would agree with you. Yeah, he I mean, is if, the go to guy with Planet X. And I've I've done I've done a lot on it, and I've seen the pitfalls of of the research too. And I'm like an internet, <laughs> as you say, looks like yourself. And it's like, I'll, but I'll go through the data because I have to. I have to go through the data. I can't ignore it because I think it's difficult, or I can't ignore it because some of it might be wrong, but then some of it might be right, and then you have to make a, a sound decision on that. Um, I, I do think, though, perhaps that the animal die-offs and stuff like that, fish die-offs, birds, that if something was coming in, it would affect the magnetism of this planet. It, it may affect the physical thing, and this will probably come into some of the other evidence we're going to talk about. I do think that it would, at the very least, affect our magnetism. It may come in on different orbits. It may, it, sometimes it might come in on a highly disruptive or, orbit. It could just, it, it could actually hit the Earth cloud and bring in comets with it, LA. Uh, and it could be a whole destructive thing like the cataclysm of the Ice Age. Um, but it also could come in on a very wrong, shallow angle. And the dates might be wrong. It still might be coming. I think Gil might have the dates wrong and he's put the evidence right. And, and I'm open to any of that, really. So I won't reel it out. But I think the Planet X uh, evidence is... And it's great to see you take that on, LA. It really is. But I just think that it might explain some of this... Fish die-offs. The, I mean, dolphins getting beached, especially in the UK. We've had a lot of that too, LA, uh, this part of the globe. Uh, it might also explain the volcanoes and the earthquakes um, in tectonic stuff. So I think we might be seeing some of it, but in a very less less extent. So I'm open to it still being there. I'm not entirely sure we're going to see it in 2015 or 2016. Pray God we don't, LA. Pray God we don't. But um, well, and I, I look, I agree with you. And, and you know, you mentioned volcanic activity, earthquakes. There's definitely an uptick in both of these. Off the charts. And the question is why? Why now? Why the uptick? What's interesting is, and this is what the whole you know day, days of chaos book and the DVD is mm. really about. The bottom line is there's an ancient prophecy stated by Yeshua. Jesus, 2,000 years ago. And remember when he says this, and this is what, you know, people who listen to your show, and, and frankly, a lot of people that, you know, that, that you will hear me go, oh my gosh, he's, he's thumping the Bible. No, no, no. First of all, you got to understand where I'm coming from. And that's why I'm going to paint the picture. 2,000 years ago, there's this itinerant rabbi, Yeshua, that's his Hebrew name. Yep. And it's translated Yeshua in the Greek, it's Iesu. And then Iesu Christos becomes Jesus the Messiah. Mm-hmm. That's the translation, okay? It's like Umberto in Spanish, Robert in English, right? Gotcha. That's the same guy. So 2,000 years ago, he's got like 12 disciples. That's it. There's no churches. There's no pope. There's no stained glass windows. There's no cathedrals. There's no priest with funny robes. No ritual. Funny haircuts, <laughs> no ritual. No rosaries. Nothing. Nothing exists. That's all man-made gobbledygook. There's one man, God-man, running around with these 12 guys and everywhere he goes he's like to us it's it's total magic people are getting healed people are getting fed he's walking on the water he's doing all sorts of crazy stuff i mean if, if the accounts are true it's beyond science fiction at that mm. point point. and so these guys his disciples go okay what's it going to be like at the end of the age and he says something which is absolutely filled with hubris he says well let no one deceive you for many will come in my name and say, I am the Messiah. Don't be fooled. It's like, what? 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 <laughs> I mean, there, there is no PR. There is no television. There's no, you know, no, Jesus, the Messiah. I mean, there's nothing like that. There's nothing. There's nothing going on. In fact, yeah. the guy's crucified for crying out loud. There is no PR firm. And for him to utter a statement like that is the height of hubris, and it's absurd. And mm. then he adds to it. He says, 
there'll be wars and rumors of war, famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places, troublesome time, men and women fainting from fear from what is coming upon the earth. That's what he says. And then he adds to it and he says, it'll be like the days of Noah when I return. It's like, what? So that passage is so pregnant with meaning. Mm. And what are we seeing? We're seeing an uptick in wars and rumors of wars. Oh, We're yeah. seeing famines. We're seeing pestilence. We're seeing earthquakes in diverse places, troublesome times, fish and animal die off. If these aren't the days of chaos, James, I don't know what is. Seriously, I've never seen the planet so tenuous. I'm with you, bro. Now. I'm with you on the chaotic. Um, I mean, the, <laughs> the wars, the wars. I'm a humanitarian. I, I, I don't want... Uh, I won't even speak badly of people these days. I'll say something in a diplomatic way so that I don't even speak badly of people. That's where I've got to in my life. I've, I've evolved to that level. But, um, you know, I just hate to see one another kill each other on this planet. I mean, and it's shocking that it, well, there's people that turn a blind eye to it, too. They just don't, it's not in their part of the world. So it's OK to go in their nice, yeah, safe yeah. little home and watch their sports TV channels. And, you know, well, that's happening over in some Middle Eastern country. That's all over there. This is all a global thing. And uh, the more global, we are getting more global, whether we like it or not. I just don't know how well, we can keep hurting each other these days. And and what's happening in Europe right now, as you know, is mm. unprecedented with w o upwards of one million Islamic refugees going into Europe. That's yeah. going to change. And it already has in some ways yeah. the cultural fabric of of the continent and eventually the UK yeah. uh, because of Sharia, which trumps all the other governments. It's like it doesn't matter what form of government any country has, Muslims want Sharia law. And they're getting ready to, you know, another what, another 500, 600,000? I mean, in my opinion, with all due respect, it's an invasion. And even now in Germany, there's, there's beginning to be pushback. Um, it's one thing if you want to assimilate. It's one thing if you want to come to a country like the U.K., and, and assimilate, yeah. like other people have assimilated in our country and in the United States. I mean, my great-grandparents came from Italy, and they learned English, and they assimilated, and they took mm. on, you know, American law, not Italian jurisprudence. All that's changed. You know, you mentioned something about the people who want to watch football or whatever it is, you know, on the tube. Yesterday in Ankara, the death toll, twin oh, suicide I watch this. bombs, I watch this, upwards yeah. of 100 now, and, and scores I mean, I, I think it's something like well over 200 were injured. So 100 people were killed from this incredibly deadly suicide blast. And what people, this is what people don't want to talk about because it seems like it's offensive. This is Islam. This is the face of Islam. There's no way around it. We can all tap dance around that and pretend it doesn't exist. But every 8 to 14 days in Iraq, mm -hmm. a Sunni or a Shia detonates him or herself against the opposite sect. And this has been going on literally for years, since the fall of Saddam. These suicide bombers, and it, and it just doesn't stop. In Israel, um, you know, you always hear about the Israelis open fire on this. Well, this crazed Palestinian woman took a butcher knife and just started stabbing people. I mean, you know, yelling, Allahu Akbar. This is where we are. So what's amazing to me is all this is in the biblical narrative. It was prophesied 2,000 years ago and done so with great specificity. And what people need to understand is that there, there is a force, and that force has a name, and it's evil. Mm -hmm. There's a malevolent force that's driving its agenda, even as we speak. And that's, that's in my opinion, that's why we see the chaos that we see on the planet. Right. That's why things have gotten so chaotic. I've come to believe in this world, L.A., that... It, there's a good and there's an evil. There's a, there's a good and a bad. There's, there's a light and a dark at present. And, and it's nothing we can change or get rid of. I think we can just either become aware and shift our consciousness to, to one end of the scale. Um, and I think that if, if you're not aware of this and you're ignoring this, go with the whole Star Wars thing if you want, you know, that dark and dark and is going to, you know, rule the universe and light's going to rule the universe, you know, whatever, you know, I, I just think it's a, it's a, it's a concept that I, I, I've come to believe that it's there and it's present, clear and present danger, if you will. Um, so I'm with you on that. Um, how could a man 2000 years ago know this? LA. That's the big one for me. I mean, in, in a practical, logical sense, I, I, does, did, perhaps I'm open to it all being true. Perhaps he was aware of like 
you know, a, a planet X coming in that changes our consciousness with magnetism or, I mean, they say that astrology rules the stars or whatever, maybe our physical presence on this earth is getting our consciousness shifting over the ages because of, you know, whatever, electromagnetism. I'm open to any of that. I'm open to any of this being true. Well, here's here's my take on it. And I've written about this extensively in the Cosmic Chess Match. We're told again from the biblical prophetic narrative that there are three heavens. The first heaven is earth. Hmm. Second heaven is the atmosphere around the earth and also out in the universe and can include other dimensions. The third heaven is where the God of the universe sits. That's his dwelling place. And so if Yeshua really is God, and this is what's interesting, this is the prophetic biblical, um, the biblical prophetic narrative is really the only book on the planet that's got prophecies like this done with great specificity, with 100% accuracy 100% of the time. With all due respect to Nostradamians, he's 60, 70% right, but not 100% right. And some of his prophecies are extremely difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. They're they're cloaked and they're hidden. Mm. Um, Hopi Indian, same thing. Um, oh, yeah. And 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 on and on it goes. So the biblical prophetic narrative seems to be a hundred percent accurate, one hundred percent of the time, and calling things out with great specificity. This means that there is someone dwelling outside space time as we know it. And, and the, the analogy is, is this, and this came from, from a guy by the name of Chuck Smith. At least this is where I first heard it. I don't know where he heard it. If we're on the ground and we're watching a parade go by, and there's, this, there's like 30 floats. So the parade is like, let's say, an hour long, and there's 30 floats that are going to pass by in that hour. We're standing in a fixed place. Here comes the Mickey Mouse float. There it is. Here comes the Guy Fox float float right yeah. right next to mickey all right yeah here comes the star wars float so we are seeing these floats pass by in a linear way in a linear way just passing by one at a time Good. that's analogous to the way human beings perceive time mm. let's say we could pop up in a helicopter guess what we see all 30 floats simultaneously gotcha and that's that's his whoever is writing this that's their perspective. They time to them is like being in the helicopter looking at looking at the thirty floats. They see them all at the same time. Wow. Because time time really doesn't exist. And Einstein Einstein's theory basically proves that space and time are relative and the closer we get to the speed of light, time slows down. If we can reach the speed of light, which we can't, uh, time wouldn't exist at all. So I mean, in, in theory, it, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, what's interesting about this, let me add one thing to it, and I'll move into the UFO phenomenon. Oh, please, when yeah. Tra when Travis Walton is abducted, and this is a perfect example of time dilation. In fact, Richard Shaw did a whole um, segment in Watchers 9 about time dilation with the Converger's UFO footage. Mm -hmm. In other words, what we're seeing is um, these entities that are, that are just sitting there like this in the open craft. And then all of a sudden, this, this other figure is like this, like moving very, very quickly. And I'm doing this with my finger because you, you get what I mean. It's like yeah. moving in and out. Exactly if you were to slow that down, it would be like this. And that's exactly what Rick did. He slowed the footage down and you get all of a sudden, here's my finger. Instead of this, here's my finger. And what, we, what, what Rick discovered was there's another entity in that craft that's moving at a very, very fast speed much faster than ours. With that in mind, Travis Walton is abducted years ago. Mm -hmm. There's a movie written about Travis, oh, yeah. Fire in the Sky. Okay? He's abducted, he's taken, he's probed, he's on a table, the whole deal. All right? And I've talked to Travis about it. Mm -hmm. He looked at me and said, they're evil, they're pure evil. That's what he told me. That's his take on it. Mm -hmm. So he's let back, he gets on the payphone, he calls his people, his homeboys come and, you know, Travis, where have you been? He goes, you're not going to believe this. But, you know, I've, I've only been gone a couple hours. What's wrong? I may look at him and say, no, Travis, you've been gone for five days. Mm. Five days. Wow. Earth time. Earth Travis, time. in Travis's time, he was gone for a few hours. Yeah. That's all it was. In Earth time, it was five days. That's time dilation. So that's why the biblical prophetic narrative I mean, Yeshua is calling this stuff out. And when you actually re start reading what's in the narrative, I mean, it, he does this all the time. I'll give you one more example. 
Mm-hmm. And see, this is this is why we got to we got to get out of the out of the four corners of of the church and religion and and the vicar with the hats and the costumes and all this nonsense, which just all it does is obfuscate what's really going on. So here's the deal. There is a prophecy. It's, it's like an eight cushion shot. So much is going on in the narrative here. Mm-hmm. There's there's a, a prophecy which states and this is like. Um, thousands of years old, basically almost 2,500 years old, states that the precise day of the Messiah's entry. It, it is tells this 5776? Is this the... Well, that's a little different. Okay. That's, that's something else. I want that, to come that, to that, though, as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's the Gematria. Mm. And that's, what, that's what's happening in Matoricos. But when you go to the book of Daniel, it says specifically that from the time, to the, from the, time the decree is given... To rebuild the temple in Jerusalem, to Messiah comes will be 490 years. That decree came from Cyrus. It's actually in your neck of the woods. You can go to the English Museum, the Cyrus the British Museum, Cyrus. and you can see the stele yeah. on the rock. You can see it carved out. I've seen it. Yeah, ding, 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 ding. you've seen it. There yeah. you go. So we know that it exists. So Yeshua, Jesus, um, on this one particular day, arranges for his entry into Jerusalem. Which is wacky because he's he knows the time. And he sends two people, and this is crazy, but there's no humor in the Bible, remember that. Mm-hmm. He sends two people and he goes, Okay, here's the deal. You're gonna go into the city, Jerusalem, you're gonna find a cult which has never been ridden. You're gonna take the cult, and when the people go, Hey, where are you going with the cult? You're gonna say the master has need of them. Now that's analogous to me being told. You're going to go to the 7-Eleven here in the United States, right? And you're going to see a Lexus with the keys in it and the motor running, but the guy isn't in the car. Get him a Lexus, and when the guy comes out and says, hey, where are you going with the Lexus? You're going to say, the master has need of it. Are you kidding me? Do you realize how absolutely bonkers that is? That's crazy. And that's what he's telling his guys to do. So they go in. It's exactly like he says. How does he know there's a cult there? How does he know what the guy's going to say? You see what's in operation here? Mm-hmm. He's he's traveling into the future, telling them what they're going to experience. Anyway, they come back. He gets on the cult. Most of us know it is Palm Sunday, but we don't even know what really is going on there. He is fulfilling the prophecy of the Messiah coming into Jerusalem precisely 490 years after the prophecy is written. It's wow. profound, absolutely profound. We're just coming up to break, so uh, just for the webpage, you can go to CapricornRadio.com for the free archives and CapricornMembers.com for the HD TV and uh, MP3 archives. Uh, but for now, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back in just a moment. There is something majestic in the land of Ireland. This is known the world over. The Celtic Irish are descendants of the Tuatha de Danann, a mysterious supernatural race of gods written about in ancient Irish Gaelic texts. This is the basis for all Irish mythology and our megalithic ancestors are interlinked with these peoples. You have a chance to come and see these monuments and temples for yourself. The megalithic landscape is rich in the realms of myth, legend and wisdom. Come see all this on the most spectacular Sacred Sites Tour in March 2016. The Sacred Sites and Equinox Tour is not to be missed. Tour highlights include Grillen of Aelok Observatory, the Giant's Ring Henge and Dolmen, St. Patrick's Day Special at St. Patrick's Ancient Chair, March 17th. Knock Manny Passage Tomb linked to the Queen Maeve with special access. Beemore Temple Complex. Dunluce Castle. The Giant's Causeway. Beltany Stone Circle. Kilcluny Dolmen. And the Lock Crew Equinox Event Alignment. Of course we will see the famous tombs of Newgrange, Noth and Doth. Also, Fornox Rock Art and Shamanic Chamber, Tara Hill Complex, and we're going to finish at the Tua de Danans Origins in the northwest of Ireland at Carroll Keel, dated 3500 BC, 
and the famous Carl Moore 5000 BC complex. Check out all the full itinerary on the Tours Events page for more details at jameswagger.com. Welcome back to Capricorn Radio. This is your host James and don't forget to check out the archives uh, at capricornmembers.com. You can subscribe for membership, uh, doing a lifetime membership deal at the moment. And uh, of course you can still check out the free archives at capricornradio.com. And then uh, HDTV uh, shows as well on the Capricorn Members page. But for now... um. And I want I want you to explain that five seven seven six that I mentioned with Messiah, uh, uh, which is equal to the year twenty sixteen, because obviously twenty sixteen coming up fast. So, uh, um, it, can you explain that for us? There's everything in in, in Hebrew in, in the Hebrew letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Um, all the letters in the Hebrew alphabet have a numerical value, all of it. Mm-hmm. So when we read about in the Book of Revelation. Uh, the number of his name is 666. That's that's the mark of the beast. Yeah. 666. The number of his name will add up to 666. The writer of Revelation, John, is basically uh, pointing back to the to Gematria and saying, look at this. Well, uh, Rabbi Glazerson and, and others with Torah codes, and Richard did a whole expose on this, which is just incredible, in Watchers 9. And uh, within that, uh, what they what they getting these tables through the Torah codes, telling... It's adding up, the, the Torah codes are adding up to 2016. Wow. And this is this has caused the rabbis to go, oh my gosh, Messiah coming in 2016? So now that's, you know, being, it, it's like, it's, it's not gone viral on the internet, but it's gone viral in Israel. Yeah. For those who look at this stuff. And are they prepping for that? Attention. Are they prepping for that, you think? That I don't know. I know that they're very expected. Richard, Richard said that he had never seen Rabbi Glazerson so excited, and wow. you know, just absolutely on the edge of his seat. And I, look, the Jews have been awaiting their Messiah um, for thousands of years. Yeah. And you know, for the Christians, um, the Messiah has already come. And Scripture again tells us that the nation of Israel or the Jews have been blinded in part, but at one, at some point they will realize what's going on. This is all supernatural stuff. And it's, it's, it's you know, it's, I'm just yeah. kind of telling it very lightly, but it's, yeah. there's a whole supernatural dynamic to what we see happening. And this door's going to slam if I don't get up. Hold okay, on. bro. I'm just going to get this one too. Okay. Yeah, I, I looked up in the wind, the wind just picked up and the door's going. No worries, bro. I know, I know it will slam really loud. Thank you. Um, tell me I'm not too sure on this one but tell me the significance of the third temple in Israel because this is focused a little bit in Watchers 9 yeah um, once again this is the work of um, of, of Rick Rick brought had contact with this guy Shlomi and um, you know what's interesting about this is when we go to the book of Daniel which I've already mentioned mm-hmm. it talks about the temple the antichrist this figure the one who was instead of Messiah, presenting himself in the temple to be worshipped as God. In order for that to happen, in my opinion, that temple has to be rebuilt. And of course, what we look at in Israel is that that's impossible at the moment mm-hmm. because the Temple Mount is a 40-acre parcel controlled by the WAF, W-A-Q-F. And the WAF, is, they're all Muslim. And the idea of a, of a, of a Jewish temple on that on that Temple Mount has started in the past at Intifada. So that's that's where this whole thing and yet prophecy states this is what's so incredible about this. Prophecy states that the temple will be rebuilt. And yet we look at what the current state of affairs and you go, well that's impossible. Yeah, that ain't never gonna happen. It's never gonna it's happen. It's never gonna happen. And yet prophecy calls out with great specificity that it will happen. That that temple will be rebuilt. And so it, it'll be very interesting to see how it comes down. Let me add to that. Who would have ever imagined the Arab Spring? Who yeah, us, you couldn't have envisaged right? that. You couldn't have envisaged that. You couldn't have envisioned it. Who would have imagined the Ruskies coming into Syria under under the leadership of Tsar Vladimir? 
Who would have ever imagined the Russians with 150,000 troops and giving 75 Soviet era tanks to Hezbollah in the north and then giving the S-300 anti-missile system to Russia? I mean, if you don't think this is the lead up to World War III, then, you know, you're, you're watching too many sports shows. I'm mm. speaking rhetorically here. Mm. But, yeah, I mean, that, that's what's going on. This is all unprecedented, and yet the biblical prophetic, pr- pr- the biblical prophetic narrative warns us precisely of what is happening now. Sure. Uh, Brooks Agnew, I love Brooks' work, uh, fellow physicist as well, although he's up there compared to me. <laughs> but um, he's, all- he's, he's an awesome guy and an awesome researcher and an awesome intellectual soul. Um, Tell us uh, about Jade Helm. Um, I'm not too... I, I've had a few other guys talk a little bit about this for me, but uh, tell us why Brooks is there and the Jade Helm scenario. Well, two things. Brooke, I wanted to bring in Brooks, and Richard and I talk about this, because of the threat of an electromagnetic pulse weapon mm. and also because of a Jade Helm exercise. Mm-hmm. Uh, we believe that the exercise, uh, there's a reason for it, and the reason simply is this. They're in, they're in preparation for something. Um, our intel knows that there's a real possibility of, a, of an electromagnetic pulse weapon. Yeah. And what that is is when you take you take a rocket, okay, and you launch that rocket, and it's got a nuclear payload. You launch it 200 miles in the air, and then you detonate that, that rocket with the nuclear payload on it. That creates an electromagnetic pulse, which shorts out all the electricity over thousands of miles, wow. thousands of miles, which means your refrigerators, your cars, cell phones, radios, TV, nothing works. Life as we know it comes to a grinding halt. If it's, no matter when it is, it'll be devastating. If it happens in this country, absolutely devastating. Millions of people will die within the first year because there's no food, there's no water, there's no way to get food or get water. People are isolated, the old and the young and the sick and the elderly will die very quickly, very quickly, within a matter of weeks. They'll go first. And this is what we're faced with. And so Brooks brought the whole idea of an electromagnetic pulse weapon. Again, this is why the DVD and the book is, is called by the same name, Days of Chaos. Okay. I mean, that, that's where we are. Don't laugh now, LA, but, and call me negative, if you will, but uh, I, as an engineer uh, and physicist, um, I worked in science all my life and engineering, and, and I was ashamed of myself a few years ago that I didn't know how to grow anything. I actually took, I couldn't took a seed and put it in the ground because I didn't know what it would do, honestly. And I, and I was ashamed of myself. I said, look, you know what? I read all these ancient histories of cataclysms and stuff and comets coming in. So if the comet came in and struck us, I'd be one of the first to go in the queue because I wouldn't have had to grow anything. I wouldn't have to forage or any. Or, and, and, I, and I went on a wave of growing. This is going to bring in the bees as well. Um, but, you know, I, I thought I'd get off my ass and do something. And, and I did. And I, and I started growing some produce to see what it's like, to, to learn, to, to understand the whole process. And I'm proud of myself for doing that. Um, I became aware of the bee problem because of that. And I know you're going to speak about that now, but the... Uh, the bees are everything, uh, L.A. The bees are everything to this civilization. We don't even realize that. I mean, they do 70% of the fertilization of the plant products on this, and we don't have the plants, we don't have the animals. Yeah, uh, the, the whole idea of the colony collapse, which is happening not only here but in other countries as well, yeah. um, what uh, a necropsy of the bee, of dead bees, is showing that many of these bees have an aluminum content in their system like a hundred times what's normal. Mm. And that begs the question, what's going on with this? Which points to the chemtrails that are in the, in the atmosphere. Um, you know, once again, no, nobody looks up, as Dr. Roger Lear would say. People don't look up and they don't. And yet they spray, um, you know, the, the surrounding skies, specifically in North America and Europe. I've never seen a chemtrail while down in Peru. Never seen You one. don't see them there, but, no. No. But, down, but up here, we see them all the time. In California, there are days where the sky is crisscrossed in chemtrails. There's so many of them. Yeah. Uh, and, and we believe that they are spraying something. And, you know, when they say, oh, it's just a new jet fuel. No, it's not. You know, jet fuel doesn't linger in the air and billow out and turn the air or turn the sky milky white. That's, that's something else is going on here. Yeah. And that's why the necropsy of the bees uh, seems to be showing this. And what people don't understand with uh, you know the the colony collapse, uh, where the bee die off, as you stated, James. Mm-hmm. Uh, if this happens, 
if if it, if it becomes pandemic, uh, there's no pollination. If mm-hmm. there's no pollination, fruits don't ripen, crops don't grow. Now what? As Einstein said it, and we I think we used a quote in the film. Mm-hmm. You know, if the bees go extinct, men will follow, and that's exactly true. We we can't sustain ourselves without the bees. Most people don't realize it takes millions of flowers. It takes bees. Millions of flowers going from flower to flower to flower to make just one pound of honey. Yeah. It's astounding. It's astounding, yeah. And, you know, something actually I learned about the bees, it's the only food that never rots as well. Honey never rots. It, it never goes off. It's, honey it's, never rots. No, matter no what it's, they're such magical. They're such I mean, magical. Think, think about that. Just just ponder that for a minute. Sure. That's, there's something going on with honey that it never, it never deteriorates. Yeah. And, and that's... It, that's why it's good for you. There's something really special about the bees. And uh, um, a lot of people were trying to blame pesticides for the thing. But I don't think the pesticide evidence was right. And I think you're right with the chemtrails and the aluminum. Um, it's there for a reason. And it's not a good reason, L.A. The chemtrails. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I just came back from Mexico. I never seen any uh, I never seen any chemtrails in Mexico. Nice blue skies. No. No, um, it's, it's, only, it's only in the northern hemisphere and goes over into Europe. That that's where the chemtrails are. Wow. I don't think the I don't think the Ruskies are spraying. Oh, there's a Pliskins. Hey, he's got to say hello. This is the mascot for Capricorn TV. There you go. Um, I want you to talk about the Book of John in Iran and what the significance of that is um, and where that fits in LA. I'm trying to cover as much as I can on all the different points for the show. Well, this this man we we don't know his name. Um, he remained completely incognito to us. Um, he presented himself. I probably couldn't pick him out in a crowd literally yeah it was a very quick meeting with him um we disguised his voice disguised what he looked like um this guy is uh, a pastor in iran mm-hmm. and has brought many many people uh to a belief in the messiah or mm. what christians believe is the messiah and what was interesting about this is he told us this story and we're just sitting there listening to this thing we were just blown away and this man was told to go out and speak to this old man who lived out in the middle of nowhere. And the guy lived in like a stone hut, dirt floor, no electricity, no running water, a couple of goats scratching out a little meager existence in the middle of nowhere in Iran. Okay, mm-hmm. But every night for a period of about a month, there's a knock on the door. And he goes to open the door and there's a man standing there in these white robes and this guy's glowing. You know, he's like shining. He's brilliant. It's like, what? So he invites him in, which is crazy. And they sit down, and this man in the robe tells him, get a pen, you know, get a, a pen and paper. And this guy does. And he begins to dictate in Farsi what he wants him to write. So this man begins to write, and he writes. And after a couple of hours, he falls to sleep. Gets up that morning, looks around, the guy's gone. Next night, around the same time, Knock on the door. Guess who? The guy in the white robe again. Wow. He comes in. This goes on for a period of about 30 days. So word gets to our mystery man, and we don't even know his name. He gave us a false name. Don't know his name. Mm-hmm. And uh, the mystery man was told, you got to go out and see this guy. So he goes out, and he sees this man, and he sits down with him in this little hut, and the guy tells him the story, and he goes, and after 30 days, I've completed this, but I don't know what it is. And he hands him a stack of papers. It's like a small book. And this man, the pastor, begins to read what's there. And it's, it's verbatim, the Gospel of John in Farsi. That's crazy. That's wow. off the hook, miraculously crazy. And it's like we heard that. We all just looked at each other. And Khomeini... Uh, and when Ahmadinejad was president, mm-hmm. both of them declared that the number one enemy of the Iranian state of the mullahs is Christianity. And the reason for this is tens of thousands of people are having dreams and encounters like this with Yeshua that are supernatural. You don't hear about it in the press. The Iranians keep it dumbed down. But that's what's going on. There's a huge underground church in Iran right now. And it's the number one threat to the mullahs because it goes against Islam. That's why ISIS, if you're if you're a Christian, you get your head chopped off. Yeah. That's what happens. So, you know, very intense stuff. Well, that's intense, bro. Um, 
the four blood moons that have occurred lately. I was actually coming back from Mexico. I was at the airport and the blood moon was there before I am. I managed to catch it. Um, why are we having so many blood moons? Is this an indicator of something, L.A.? Well, I, I believe it is. And that's why, you know, we, we look at we look at I look at the, the summation of everything that we've talked about and the prophetic, uh, the biblical prophetic narrative where Yeshua, Jesus warns us what it will be like before his return. The wars and rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places, troublesome times, men fainting from fear from what is coming upon the earth. Those are the signs that he tells us, with great specificity, by the way, will herald his his return. And you go back 50 years, it wasn't like this. Go back 20 years, it wasn't like the planet. Look, you can even go back to the days of World War II, which was certainly tumultuous by anyone's standards. Mm -hmm. And then you throw in Nagasaki and Hiroshima, but it's not like what we've got today. I mean, what most people, when I wrote about this in the book, Days of Chaos, days of chaos. yeah, um, Fukushima, the, fu the Fukushima disaster, that happened on the heels of a 9.0 earthquake. And what people don't understand is the Fukushima uh, prefecture is like here, and this is the Pacific Ocean. This tidal wave comes in and wipes out, and we saw it live on TV because of the satellites. It, it killed, what, upwards of 20,000 Japanese people who couldn't flee this ensuing tidal wave. It also damaged the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear reactor power plant. Mm -hmm. So much so that Reactor 4 is in critical um, meltdown right now and has been for months. Uh, the Japanese government lied to us to cover it up. TEPCO lied to us about what was really going on in Fukushima. Now it's all starting to spill out, no pun intended. What we do know is that millions of gallons a day of radioactive water are being pumped back into the Pacific Ocean. So yeah. at some point, there's a tipping point, and you know, things are becoming irradiated. And it's like Chernobyl was, where Chernobyl in the, in the, in the Ukraine, a reactor blew. And what they did to, to contain it, they built this cement sarcophagus over the reactor. Well, you can't go into Chernobyl. You can basically go in there for a few hours. That's it. Mm -hmm. And you wear a, a radioactive suit with a little detector on it to show you how many rads you've taken in. And that's it. You can only stay there for so long. And then you got to get out of there and de you know, decontaminate. Sure. You can go in, but, you know, you're taking a risk and exposing yourself to radiation. Well, welcome to Fukushima. These people mm. who lost their homes and livelihood, they will never go back in there again. And, you know, they're trying to use robots to go in and try to cool the reactor in, in, in uh, reactor four and the robots melt. That's how hot it is. Wow. That's, I mean, you know, and we hear nothing about it at all. It's like completely dumbed down. So it's old this news is now, point. isn't it, LA? It's like old news. Oh, oh that happened. That's like old news. People. Oh that... yeah, it's old news. Fukushima. Oh, it's all under control. No, it's not. Yeah. And, you know, and in my book, there's a website I quote or link to. And by the way, the book Days of Chaos um, has links to. Um, uh, it, it's also a uh, um, a Kindle book, although it's not up there yet, but it will be. It's excellent. all set to go next week. We'll have it up on Kindle. And, and what's links? great about that is. Yeah, all the links are there. You can go click and go to the awesome. Fukushima Diary uh, and dot com and yourself, and and you read it. You know, tell me where I'm going wrong here. Yeah. And I realize, you know, James, this is not a feel good, happy message. It's not. Yeah. I get that. But like you said, we can either you know go go have a pint at the local brew and brewery and forget about all this stuff, which a lot of people choose to do. Yeah. Or we can face reality, and this is what this is. This is reality. And it ain't going away. You know, LA, we actually got some of the fallout from uh, Chernobyl in Northern Ireland. The sheep uh, were let roam on the hills. In, in Northern Ireland is mostly mountainous, by the way. Uh, the so southern half of the country is lowlands. But um, but Northern Ireland uh, was getting some of the fallout from Chernobyl. And the, the sheep were, you know, used for farming. But they were just left run wild for 30 years after that. They wouldn't touch them like. Um, so wow. we, that, and that's a good distance, LA. That's a good distance. And that'll just yeah. give people a little wake up call. You know, don't think you're because it's in some distant part, you know, either getting into the ocean or getting into the air. It, it can migrate a long, a long way along. Um, sure it can. I, I'm, I firmly believe that some of the, uh, the dolphin deaths, whale deaths, starfish deaths, stuff along the West Coast of the United States probably links back to in some way Fukushima. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's all being managed. Look, it just I, there was a. 
there was a report that came across my desk. Some guy, I forget the guy's name, that it, and he and this guy deliberately blocked the Warren Commission from certain evidence. Oh yeah, that may have led to another, uh, you know, led away from Lee Harvey Oswald as the lone gunman and yeah. pointed to a conspiracy. Yeah. And now it's just coming out 50 plus years later. Yeah. Well, oh, that this is our government would never do that. Oh, surely these people would never do that. Nonsense. Of course they do. So, you remember this is the same government that rounded up the Native Americans and put them in concentration camps. This is the same government that experimented with blacks in the United States and and gave them syphilis to see what would happen, right? And on and on it goes. Mm -hmm. So, do I believe these guys? Of course not. And yeah. when when they when the Japanese government tells me that Fukushima is okay and it's a media blackout in this country, I don't believe that for a New York minute. For sure, uh, Ella. Yeah, of course, you mentioned Native Americans there. You've got them in the documentary as a group that may have some knowledge that's prevalent here. Tell us a little bit about that, Ella. Let me get a swig here. We interviewed Chief Joseph Riverwind and his wife Laura mm. Lynn Riverwind, and. What's interesting about Chief Joseph, uh, or both of them, first of all, they're they're born from above, spirit filled Christians. That's that's where their that's their operation. That's mm -hmm. that's their worldview. But Chief Joseph talks about that um, before Europeans came in here, um, his people worshipped Creator God, and they called him Yah, Yehovah, uh, which is the same biblical name. How did that happen? And certain prophecies were given. Um, to Native Americans. Um, one of the major prophecies is that there would be, that the trees would begin to die from the top down. Guess what? Out here in California, we're seeing that. Unprecedented. Mm -hmm. They're dying from the top down. Then there was another prophecy talking about that there would be these spider webs in the sky. And is that the chemtrails um, that is that crisscrosses over our land? And something, Chief Joseph thinks that it may be, and I, I agree with them. They do look like webs, for sure. They, they really do look like webs. And so yeah. if you don't know what you're looking at, you know, and you look up, you, well, how would you describe it? It looks like a web. Of course it does. Yeah. So it, it, it's very, very interesting to get the Native American perspective on some of this end-time phenomenon that we're seeing now, phenomena that we're seeing now. If anybody just wants to understand how much air traffic there is in the world, go to a website called Flight Radar 24 and you can see the present air traffic going around the world and the whole, of, the, the whole of America is just like bees. It looks like there's a swarm of bees over America. And I think if they're going to do something to this planet and they want it to be over populations, well, the planes fly over populations. What an efficient, genius way to harm a populace. Uh, not a good thing, obviously. I'm just saying that it's an efficient, genius way if you want to harm a populace to, to, to do something like that. And I, I've, no, I've no problem uh, believing there's something in the, in harmful in the chemtrails. I don't think it's a good thing. A lot of people were actually in early days, LA, trying to speculate and come back to Planet X in a way. They were saying, oh, they know Planet X is there and they're just trying to shield us from seeing it. I'm like, I'm sorry. I, yeah. I, I think it's yeah, a bit. I'm not, I think, that one, right? I'm not buying that one either. Uh, yeah. I'm thinking it's a bit more harmful juice in in, in the fuel. There's, you know, we know from the chemtrails that they're spraying aluminum and barium. Barium as well, a, yeah. Yeah, a major rise in Alzheimer's, um, a rise in autism, mm -hmm. and I think I think in some way there's a connectivity between all this stuff and GM foods. And the bottom line is, it's yet another sign. You see, we're, the planet is under the control of, of dark forces, to use your term. Yeah. If, as long as I couch it like that, people aren't offended. The moment I go Satan, it's like, oh, my, everybody yeah. takes a step back. Yeah. So we'll just agree to call it dark forces, <laughs> yeah. all right? The entire planet is under control of, of extremely malevolent dark forces. Oh, yeah. And these forces have an agenda, and that agenda has been prophesied that this, this anti-Messiah guy will proclaim himself to be God in the rebuilt temple. He'll be, he'll be able to do supernatural things, and the world will follow after him. Now, I'm not making this stuff up. That's, you know, thousands of year old prophetic language, which I think we're looking at. I think where the stage is being set for it. Yeah, it's written on the Georgia Guidestones, and I believe there's been an update. There to it the, is. And there's been an update to the Georgia Guidestones by the, the mystery guy. 
um, recently. Well, I'm, I'm actually going to be there in two weeks. Are you? Wow, yeah. I've got to talk to you about that, bro. I, I don't know what the I'd update... I, I actually still filming there. Well, I just know there's been some sort of an update on the Georgia Guidestones by the mystery guy who put them up there. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a film by um, Chris Pinto yeah. and Mike Bennett. On, I haven't seen the film yet. I'm, I'm going to get it. Wow. But they, they've spent two years researching the Georgia guys does to try mm. to find out who the guy is and what the real agenda is. Mm. The agenda is really obvious to me. Keep the world population under 500 million. Yeah. Right now, there's 7 billion people. Keep the population under 500 million and tell them that you're doing it because they're too stupid to know any difference. That's that's the philosophy like, you know, tell and them. The most, you're right, James. Most people are too busy with putting food on the table, yeah. getting the kids to bed, you know, bringing the kids to school. Oh, we got, you know, the, the car broke down. We got to fix that. Oh, my God. How much how much do we owe in taxes this week? I mean, right. Yeah. And all the governments of the world even and in America, too. We are under this, and you guys, I mean, the UK, my gosh, the amount of taxes you people pay, it's just, I, I don't understand why you're not storming the Bastille. Oh, that's in French, that's why. But, but you No, get, you're you right, no, point. death and taxes, I mean, they, they tell you that when you're born here, just, you've got death and taxes, and wake up. <laughs> that's, that's it, that's it, and they'll, they tax you when you die, and they do it over here. Yeah. The American people, have, we fought a revolutionary war to stop paying these onerous taxes, now we're right back into it, a little over 200 years later. I mean, I made some really good money in 2013. We had a great year. Yeah. We sold a lot of books, a lot of stuff. We, we, you know, we, we sold a lot of product. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I could have expanded my business. Nope. Most of that profit went right to the IRS. Because the better you do, the yeah. more they take. And so what, there's no incentive to do any good anymore because, well, I'm not going to keep it anyway. It's, it's socialism. It's just going to go to some government program. And, you know, now you see this... This black woman, Obama gave me a cell phone, you know, with all due respect to black people. But what the heck is that? Yeah. What do you mean Obama gave you? And then she goes, and I'll never forget this. It, you know, whether you're on disability or food stamps or your unemployment, it's like that's her world. That's her mindset. Disability, food stamps and unemployment. It's not about how do I get educated to get the heck out of the mess that I'm in? Yeah. How do I get a better paying job? What, where's the entrepreneurial spirit? It's just Obama gave me a cell phone. I mean, that's, that's like it's so foreign to me. It's like you know I'm on a different planet here. You know, <laughs> that makes and sense. I know you are too. But that's and that's the problem in America because we are so divided. You know, you got one one group of people, the Democrats in particular, who just want to tax and spend and give everything away, free stuff. And what people don't realize, Rome fell. Because of free stuff. Yeah. Bread and circus, bread and circus. And that's exactly what's happening to America. They I'm not a happy camper. They doubled, they doubled the university fees in a recession here. I, I just don't understand how that works. I mean, just because there's a recession and there's less money, the fees double. I don't understand how that works. There's less people going to university now. You know, there's people that would have been out there in these plentiful jobs haven't got jobs to go to now, so they're going to go to the education, but they're stopping them going into education now because they've doubled the fees and they can't afford to go. And then if they can't afford to go and pay the extortion of fees, they can't get an extra job to pay the fees because the extra job wouldn't cover it. It's there like, you go. It's great, isn't it? No matter what you do, you're, you're beaten away. and You're, you're, you're beaten away. You're hosed. You're hosed down. You're hosed this down. Is, this, is, <laughs> you're hosed down. This, is, this is the problem. Yeah. This is the problem on a global level. It's like the little guy is getting screwed like crazy and then you get countries like turkey and and syria and afghanistan where they're so backward so corrupt there's such there's such evil going on there i mean i don't even follow the stuff with the afghan boys but you know it's great so this is this is the <clears throat> the afghan mentality okay we keep the women separate and when they go out we dress them in black bags so you can't see anything just the eyes and sometimes not even the eyes because that's too alluring so we can't look at the women Okay, so that's Islamic Sharia law. But what we're allowed to do under Islamic Sharia law is to take a young boy, 10 or 12, and dress him up like a girl because he's not a girl, but we'll dress him like a girl and then we'll have sodomy with him. That's somehow that's okay. Are you kidding me? Are it's you insane. kidding me? It's insanity. That's insane. Yeah. 
the more I look at you, and you say, look, Ali, you know, you say there is a grim message here, but it's reality. There's a reality to this, reality. And, I, and you can either stick your head in the sand and ostracize yourself to the world for what it is, or you can talk about it and, and, and do shows or write books and educate people and bring them to an awareness, you know, and hopefully... Um, hopefully wake some people up, LA, because I think, it's a, trying to do. I, I think it's about waking people up is the message. I and, agree. You know, I and, agree. And uh, you know what, James? It's uncomfortable. It's just it like is. the Matrix. It remember is when Neo, remember when Neo gets, gets, he's awake and then he realized where he's been. What is the first thing he, he throws up? Yeah. He yeah. throws up because he can't, he can't take it. And then, you know, and, and, and what's his face? Uh, Morpheus goes, <laughs> Pretty much everybody does that when they figure it out. And that's what happens. I had one woman wrote to me and she said, I listened to you on, on some podcast and I went screaming out of the house, literally yeah. screaming out of the house. I couldn't stand it. And then I realized that everything you said was true and I had to backpedal and I had to find a way to deal with this. And that's what, you know, people look, I'm not making this stuff up. Everything that we've talked about so far yeah. is, is absolutely true and provable. We're yeah. not making, you know, it's not, we're not wearing tinfoil hats here. You know, it's like everything that, that we're talking about is happening in real time. What can a person point to that isn't? A, a million so-called refugees storming through Europe? I mean, if that's not chaotic, I don't know what is, James. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's beyond chaotic. I, I think there's levels to the chaos too, and then there's genres to the chaos, and then there's pockets exactly. to the and pockets <laughs> to the chaos, and people don't like that chaos, but they're okay with this bit of chaos, and it's like I'm sorry, just wake up to it and and and, and talk about it and share this and 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 wake everybody up together. We're all brothers and sisters on the planet, LA. That's what I try to tell everybody anyway. Um, LA, where can we get a copy of the book? And when is Watchers Nine out? I believe Watchers Nine is out now. Everything's out. The book's out. We're shipping them. Uh, Watchers Nine, um, Days of Chaos by the same name. The book and, and the DVDs uh, cover different things. They really mm -hmm. do. Uh, like the Fukushima event is covered in the book, but not covered in Watchers Nine. Yeah. Um, the BD, the B die off is covered in, in both. In both things, but I do it differently than what's in the film. Gotcha. So the best place to get this is www.lamarzuli.net. Lamarzuli.net. Take you right there. Get sure. both of them. Educate yourself. You know, get a, an understanding of what the biblical prophetic narrative states thousands of years, and now we're in this window of time where it's beginning to manifest. Sure. And I, what I love about you, you're not just on the armchair doing this, you're out there in the field, meeting people, talking to people on the ground, looking at other researchers. And uh, I'm keen to see what you think of the Georgia, Georgia Guidestones when you're out there. When are we going to see you in the UK, LA? you got to get over this part of the world. You know what? There, there, was, there, was, talking about, there was talk about a, a conference in the spring, but I haven't heard anything about it. I mean, I would love to come there and, and, and do something. So... Well, you got a place you know, in the studio here as well, and uh, we'll hook you up with Maria Wheatley. I know she's dying to meet you as well. Yeah, so yeah, we, we got need some, to talk. For sure. But uh, look, you know, if you're over this way, Yala, you look me up, brother. But uh, I, I wish change. you every success. I, I like the book, and I like uh, I like the layout, and there's some cutting-edge stuff in there, Ali, and there really is. And, and uh, Watchers Night, I can't wait to get myself a copy. So um, you take care, brother. I'll speak to you in the not-too-distant future. Sounds good, James. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Bye now. Hi everybody, welcome back to Capricorn Radio TV. This is your host James and I am joined by a guest of the show today, returning guest Mr. L.A. Marzulli. Uh, you can follow along with lamarzulli.net for today's author and documenter. And uh, we're going to talk about this uh, season nine on Watch Your Season Nine documentary alongside the accompanying book, I believe it is, Days of Chaos. Uh, Watch Your Nine Days of Chaos attempts to pull together a team of experts to try and answer some of the most disturbing questions about the times in which we live. The host and the author, L.A. Marzioli, covers many topics of interest, 
Uh, friend of the show, Dr. Brooks Agnew, talks about EMPs and Jade Helm. Theories about the bee die-off and colony collapse syndrome. Uh, seven-year drought in California, global violence. Director Richard Shaw examines the Kamburga's UFO footage and finds aliens. A pastor in Iran tells us that Yeshua, Yeshua is visiting Muslims there and much more. Uh, um, Gil Broussard, I see, is making an appearance as well. So I'm really excited to talk to L.A. about this today. L.A., welcome back to the show, brother. Great to be here, James. Thanks for having me on. Very cool. Always good to see you again, uh, LA. Great to do a video again. Wow, I want to jump straight into Planet X because I've done a few heavy-hitting shows on Planet X, LA, and I've had the pleasure of sitting down with Gil Broussard. Is it Jill or Gil? I can't remember. Uh, it's Gil. Gil, Gil Broussard. Gil Broussard. Yeah. Um, man, he commands attention when he, when he speaks. I sat with three hours with him. Actually, it was probably about four hours with breaks and stuff and, I, and he gave me a three hour presentation which I put up LA on Capricorn TV and between going between the biblical stuff and the science stuff and the geology and the guy that, that, that's claiming to see it it looks like lens flare to me um, with all you know due respect to this one particular researcher so you know like like all these things I hold on to them very loosely mm. and this is one which I hold on to very loosely I know about Planet X I respect Gil. I think he's done an incredible amount of work. But just like, and I'll change subjects here real quick, yeah. just like what's going on in the Middle East right now with the Russians coming down, there's a lot of people going, oh, my gosh, this is the Ezekiel 38 war, yeah. which has been prophesied in the Bible for like 2,500 years. No, it's not. It's, it could be setting the stage for the Ezekiel 38 war, but we're not there yet. Yeah. And the fact that the chi are now entered the fray with, you know, nuclear submarines and and ships and everything else that ups the ante we haven't seen anything like this ever the chai comms have never been in the middle east since about 800 years and that was with the mongol invasion mm -hmm. so this is really unprecedented mm. so it's not ezekiel 38 again just like gill's work it makes me kind of sit on the edge of my seat and go okay what's coming what what's about to happen is planet x really coming are we looking at the ezekiel 38 war in the middle east is that what is that what's next on the prophetic time clock? And frankly, we don't know, which is why, once again, holding on to things loosely. Uh, I had Graham Hancock on recently, and I know Graham's work is highly indicative of perhaps a comet coming in um, in the next 40, 80 years, perhaps all ancient traditions around the world. Again, I'm open to that being maybe wrong. Hopefully, if we're wrong, it is wrong. But I'm open to it. And I'm looking at the evidence. And just like Gil, it's, it's highly indicative of something. Um, it, it's very hard to say what's going to happen. It's very hard to predict something like that. Uh, uh, the evidence that he's providing. I've had such feedback from that show, L.A., that. I mean, people that aren't even biblical or even scientific and like they're sitting there and they're just gobsmacked by the, the presentation that yeah. Gil. And man, tell me, have you, you've met Gil, have you? Yeah, well, he said we sat down for just like we're doing, except in person mm -hmm. uh, with a one on one. We probably interviewed him for at least two hours. Yeah. And then, you know, we took him to dinner and stuff and we had more, um, you know, off the record conversation. And, and of course, what's in the film, two hours boils down to like, I think maybe 12 minutes with him. Yeah. Um, he raises some fascinating points and his PowerPoint presentation is second to none. Second to uh, none. He's, right. he's, he's done his work. He's done his homework. Mm. Uh, he knows of what he speaks. The problem I have with it, and this is, you know, I've, I've been down this road. Watchers went down this road with Marshall Mastered in 2012. <laughs> yeah. Planet X was coming. We're going to see it. It's the end of the world, blah, blah, blah. Mm. You know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice type of a thing. Gotcha. So it's like, okay, I'm listening to the information. Everything that he says is is right on. Yeah, some of this stuff, if there is a planet out there, if Planet X does exist, then it, it could be causing the perturbances that we see, mm -hmm. uh, not only in, in the lunar surface, other planets certainly could account for the floods mm. um, and some of the some of the biblical um, events that happen. It, it could do all that. The problem I have is that if it was really going to show up, we would be seeing something by now, even with, even with Gill's gate of, of Gill's date of late March 2016. We should be seeing something. And, you know, I like you, I'm an Internet hound. I'm always looking for news. I go to a lot of different sites, a lot of off sites looking for information. 
There's one guy. Um, I, I somehow think that the level of research done on Planet X and just to focus on Gil again, I mean, I think he's provided the most and I think he's done, the, he's done his homework the most. And he's, provi- he, he's, the, he's the go-to guy. I would agree with you. Yeah, he I mean, is the go-to guy with Planet X. And I've, I've, done, I've done a lot on it and I've seen the pitfalls of, of the research too. And I'm like an internet, <laughs> as you say, looks like yourself. And it's like, I'll, but I'll go through the data because I have to. I have to go through the data. I can't ignore it because I think it's difficult or I can't ignore it because some of it might be wrong, but then some of it might be right. And then you have to make a, a sound decision on that. Um, I, I do think, though, perhaps that the animal die-offs and stuff like that, fish die-offs, birds, that if something was coming in, it would affect the magnetism of this planet. It, it may affect the physical thing, and this will probably come into some of the other evidence we're going to talk about. I do think that it would, at the very least, affect our magnetism. It may come in on different orbits. It may, it, sometimes it might come in on a highly disruptive or, orbit. It could dis- it, it could actually hit the Earth cloud and bring in comets with it, L.A., uh, and it could be a whole destructive thing like the cataclysm of the Ice Age. Um, but it also could come in at a very wrong, shallow angle, and the dates might be wrong. It still might be coming. I think Gil might have the dates wrong, and he's put the evidence right, and, and I'm open to any of that, really. So I won't reel it out, but I think the Planet X... Uh, evidence is, and it's great to see you take that on, LA. It really is. But I just think that it might explain some of this fish die offs. That I mean, dolphins getting beached, especially in the UK, we've had a lot of that too, LA. Uh, this part of the globe, uh, it might also explain the volcanoes and the earthquakes, um, in tectonic stuff. So I think we might be seeing some of it, but in a very less, less extent. So I'm open to it still being there. I'm not entirely sure we're going to see it in 2015 or 2016. Pray God we don't, LA. Pray God we don't. But um, well, and I, I look, I agree with you. And, and you know, you mentioned volcanic activity, earthquakes. There's definitely an uptick in both of these. Off the charts. The question is why? Why now? Why the uptick? What's interesting is, and this is what the whole you know day, days of chaos book and the DVD is mm. really about. The bottom line is there's an ancient prophecy stated by Yeshua. Jesus, 2,000 years ago. And remember when he says this, and this is what, you know, people who listen to your show, and, and frankly, a lot of people that, you know, that, that you will hear me go, oh, my gosh, he's, he's slumping the Bible. No, no, no. First of all, you got to understand where I'm coming from. And that's why I'm going to paint the picture. 2,000 years ago, there's this itinerant rabbi, Yeshua. That's his Hebrew name. Yep. And it's translated Yeshua in the Greek. It's Iesu. And then Jesus Christos becomes Jesus the Messiah. Mm-hmm. That's the translation, okay? It's like Umberto in Spanish, Robert in English, right? Gotcha. That's the same guy. So 2,000 years ago, he's got like 12 disciples. That's it. There's no churches. There's no pope. There's no stained glass windows. There's no cathedrals. There's no priest with funny robes. No ritual. Funny haircuts, <laughs> no ritual. No rosaries. Nothing. Nothing exists. That's all man-made gobbledygook. There's one man, God-man, running around with these 12 guys. And everywhere he goes, he's like, to us, it's, it's total magic. People are getting healed. People are getting fed. He's walking on the water. He's doing all sorts of crazy stuff. I mean, if, if the accounts are true, it's beyond science fiction at that mm. point. And so these guys, his disciples go, okay, what's it going to be like at the end of the age? And he says something which is absolutely filled with hubris. He says, well, 